This is Josh Billington coming to you with the Bible in the News, celebrating 75. This year, the nation of Israel celebrates 75 years since the Declaration of Independence by David Ben-Gurion. On May 14, 1948, David Ben-Gurion began the Declaration of Independence with The land of Israel was the birthplace of the Jewish people. Here their spiritual, religious, and political identity was shaped. Here they first attained to statehood, created cultural values of national and universal significance, and gave to the world the eternal book of books. After being forcibly exiled from their land, the people kept faith with it throughout their dispersion, and never ceased to pray and hope for their return to it and for their restoration in it of their political freedom. These were the words which marked the rebirth of the nation of Israel 75 years ago. In the 75 years since the state of Israel was established, the nation has changed drastically from a small, largely agricultural economy to a leader in technology and innovation, from a nation grounded on the dream of an atheist socialist utopia to becoming an increasingly religious and family oriented culture. Israel stands out against the anti-religious socialist trend of the West. We had the opportunity to attend the official celebration of Yom Hatzmuot in Toronto. It was a large event with several thousand in attendance. The event overflowed out of the large gym into the atrium behind. There were hundreds of families, grandparents, and other members of the community. The program, which was placed on our seats, opened with the words of Yechezel, of Yechezel 37, he said to me, Man, can these bones live again? I will put my breath into you, and you shall live again, and I will set you upon your own soil. Then you shall know that I, Hashem, have spoken and have acted. It continued, We are reminded of the incredible story of the rebirth of the Jewish people in their indigenous homeland. After thousands of years of hoping and praying under the most severe oppression, we have merited to witness the words of the prophets come to life. The presentation was split into two sections, Yom Hazikaron and Yom Hatzmuot, which are celebrated in Israel on the two adjoining days, which would have been April 25th and 26th of this year. The, cer- the ceremony for Yom Hazikaron featured a speech by a councilwoman for Ephrat, or at Samuel's, she was introduced by a recorded speech of Rabbi Leo D., the father of Mea and Rina D., and the husband to Lucy D., who were b- brutally gunned down by terrorists while traveling to be with family for Pesach, or Passover. She relayed personal stories of these two young teenagers, and then her own experiences growing up in a place rocked by tragedy after tragedy. Or it recounted how Rena had been talking with friends about the what if. What if I am the one taken in an act of terror? This is something no teenager should ever have to think about. Rena said, whatever they do, make sure they use a good picture. They always use such ugly ones. And living in the mountains of Israel has always required an incredible amount of faith. Even in the time of Joshua, scripture recounts the faith in which Caleb Caleb, goes up to take Hebron, or Hebron. Reading from Joshua 14 and verse 12 in the RSV. So now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day. For you have heard on that day how the Anakim were there, with great fortified cities. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall drive them out as the Lord, as the Lord said. The celebration for Yom Hatzmaut started with the raising of the flag and of a local day school choir singing Israeli folk songs. There was also a speech by Mr. Pierre Polyev, leader of the Canadian Conservative Party. Pierre served under the former Prime Minister of Canada, Stephen Harper. Harper was a strong supporter of Israel, while the United States could har- have hardly been called a friend under Obama. And instant, incidentally, the current president of the United States, Joe Biden, who was then vice president. Pierre presented warm remarks to a very enthusiastic audience. 
He has previously committed to moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, matching the policy of former President Trump. He relayed personal stories of visiting Israel, which he has done on three occasions, visiting the Golan Heights and seeing the rockets rain down from Lebanon as Hezbollah targeted the families and homes of Israel, of spending Shabbat with an ultra-Orthodox rabbi and his family of seven children in the heart of Jerusalem, listening to the kids sing the traditional prayers for, for Shabbat or the Sabbath. He said it struck him in that moment that no other religion practices the same traditions in the same land as over 3,000 years ago. Pierre strongly affirmed his commitment to supporting Israel and standing with Israel and the right of the Jewish people to their Aboriginal homeland. He spoke of the incredible accomplishments of the Jewish nation, including making the desert bloom and blossom and the incredible prophetic peace treaties of the Abraham Accords. He finished with Am Yisrael Chai, or the people of Israel lives. The question posed to the prophet Yechezel or Ezekiel was, this, was, Son of man, can these bones live? And there was on the seat with the program a magazine called HaMizrahi. I found in there an article by Rabbi Jeremy Gimple. He writes, he writes, In his final vision of the exile, Yechezel saw what seems to have been the darkest time the world had ever known when all hope was lost. He saw mass graves of the Jewish people as dry bones and ashes. They cried out, Our bones are dried, our hope is lost, we are doomed. Yechaziel 37.11 But like a burst of light from the womb of darkness, Avda Tikvatenu, our hope is lost, was transformed to Ad Lo Avda Tikvatenu, our hope is not lost. If only I could show all the Jews who lost hope in Auschwitz and Warsaw the scenes around my home in Israel as we celebrate this Yom Hatzmaut. They would see Jews living in the mountains of Judea, working the land with blossoming olive trees and vineyards that cascade down the hills. They would see Jewish children speaking Hebrew, tending to our flock of sheep. If they could see all this, what would they think? This Yom Hatzmuot, we can look back and see the incredible prophecies that have been fulfilled and continue to be fulfilled. What will another 75 years bring? Will it bring the return of the Messiah, or Mashiach, the rebuilding of the temple, and the restoration of the kingdom, of the kingdom to Israel? Truly, we can say that the people of Israel live. Am Yisrael Chai. This has been Joshua Billington with you for the Bible in the News.